Tracing your family tree online doesn't have to be that difficult if you understand the right strategies. In a previous video, I told you nine of the best online search strategies to find your genealogy records to build your family tree. And today we're gonna cover part two. Now, sometimes your ancestors are hidden because their names get butchered greatly and I can't wait to show you this example. So whenever possible, try to search by a place name. I noticed this was an option when I was searching English Paris records and the home of somebody had a name, uh, a certain name for the cottage or the, the house that they lived in. So search that cottage name or that home name in the record collections that allow it. But over on city directories, over on Ancestry, you can do a place search. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So here I'm on the US city directory um, collection just that collection, and I can go down here and do keyword. Now, the key to making this work is to know a specific location that you're going to be researching. Mine happens to be Columbus, Ohio, and I'm actually gonna take Medill off. I'm just looking for Medill Street, and let me show you how that works. So I click um, search, and I get a number of entries. Now, you're, you're not going to see Medill Street in the search results. Instead, you have to click on View Record and notice there's four Medill Street, another four Medill Street, um, OSO Medill, we'll have to figure out what that means, <laughs> 61 Medill Street. I can search all of Medill Street, and this is particularly handy if your ancestors lived on Medill Street, but the city renumbered the houses, and you can't figure out where your ancestor is. So do a broad search, all of the Columbus City directories that have Medill Street for all of the years, and then I can narrow down so as I need to. So if I go back down up, up, up here to the search, um, search page, thankfully Ancestry has kept my search page, but I can go 1141 Medill Street because that was the house number that my Geisler ancestors lived in. And I can see in 1953, 1141 Medill Street, 1141 Medill Street, 1951, and then 1936, it's a Patterson. In 1917, it's George and George and Henry. And those are the ones I expected to be there and William and so forth. So what's really great about doing a house, a, a, a place search is you can also do house history research. And I know member, many of you viewers have said, I, I want to do house history research. City directories, if the location you're researching has those, they're excellent for house history searching because then you can see the names of the people that live there. And then if you want to go to land records, you have somebody's names. And sometimes it's easier to do a name search than the address and, and stuff. So really great way to find your ancestors. And for me, I can see I haven't adjusted this Geisler um, spelling, this G-I-E-S-E-L-E-R. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> it's supposed to be like this. And so um, this is a way to catch the vari spelling variations that aren't coming up with the different, you know, wild cards and things that people, people tell you to use. So go ahead and do a place search. Really handy. The next series of strategies is to search as a couple or a family unit, but you only really need just one other person in the search. So the first one is ancestor plus spouse, ancestor plus parent. Notice it doesn't have an S, just look for one of the parents. And then ancestor plus some other person. It could be a sibling, it could be an uncle, it can be any person that you know that they were probably living with. And so put in their name plus the other person's name. Let me show you how Family Search allows you to do this your person plus another person search. I zoomed in for you, Sherman Brown, more options, and I'm going to click on add a spouse, and I'm just going to type Emma. I'm gonna type Emma and see what comes up. I need to close out some of things and zoom it out a little bit. 
but I'm going to start seeing Sherman Baker Brown and Emma, Sherman and Emma, Sherman and Emma, Sherman and Emma, all these records. Since that is still too broad, I can start searching by collection, adding a race, adding a place. There's so many other things, a marriage date, a residence location, and I can filter it down right, that, that, like that. Then let's say, you know what? I'm not finding Emma, but I know her last name was Townsend. Well, let me try surname, just the surname and the husband. Uh, and let's see what happens then. So now I'm going to get Sherman and getting married to Emma. Sherman and Emma, father of the groom and all of these other records. And this is really handy when you're trying to pick up children and what's happening in their lives, the marriage records for your ancestors. You know the last name, but you're not really sure what the first name was. And this is also an op awesome opportunity to type in your ancestor and those other surnames they could be under. So in the case of Caroline Geisler, uh, she, her maiden name is actually Caroline Mock. Her first married name is Caroline Geisler. And then her second uh, husband's last name was Billman. And so I could search for her with those different um, last names with her second husband, Michael, because maybe she does show up under Mac. Maybe she does show up under Caroline Geisler. And maybe she shows up and, and with uh, some other strange last name so I can do Michael Billman and Caroline try no surname and then two more surname to see if I can find more records about the family. So I'm going to return to family search and it's very simple to try this again with just a parent. Notice I don't have to put both parents. I can do just one. So in this case it was Samuel and maybe Samuel doesn't really have the last name Brown. Maybe they misspelled it or changed the name, but I can go ahead and click a parent and I can find Sherman Brown with a father named Samuel. And this is actually the one that applies to my family, Samuel Curtis Brown. So you can do uh, add a, we've done a spouse, we've done a parent. I'm gonna try Geraldine. I'm going to look for Geraldine Rang, but this time I'm going to add another person to her family tree. So this time I'm going to do more. I'm going to do other, and I'm going to look for William Long, her grandfather, because she did live with William Long for a little bit. So I can do that search. And now I have this 1910 census record for Geraldine Rang, who lived with William Long. It's not her father, it's not her mother, it's not her spouse, it's this other person in the household. And that becomes really, really useful when you have people that start living with other family members and you you know who they are. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna lightly touch on these last two search strategies. The, another one, the next one is to search for kin. I had lost um, Elizabeth Weekly Sparks Pitney <laughs> uh, because she wasn't showing up in the census record. So when I started looking for her daughter, all of a sudden there was this Elizabeth Blue that showed up in a census record. And by process elimination and the clues that were in the census record, I discovered that Elizabeth Blue was Miss. Um, recorded in the record and she really was my missing Elizabeth. So sometimes you need to go look for kin. Now that's just for census record. When you're looking for land records, wills and probate records, and a lot of these other records, court records especially, a lot of these are filed under the lead person on the document. But when you get into the document, you're gonna see the rest of your ancestors and like, oh, I didn't know this record was for them existed. Until we have more advanced indexing options and online searches, it pays for us to search for our kin, all of their records to see if our relatives show up in those documents. So mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, uncles, grand aunts, grand uncles, all, all of the people, <laughs> all of the relatives. Look for them all and you might just find those records for your ancestors online 
at your fingertips just by looking for that kin, kin person. Now, there were times this happened to a Canadian ancestor of mine. Their last name is Zumstein. And that name just keeps getting spelled so many different ways in Canadian records. And one time it showed up as Sumpstein. <laughs> in any case, I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them. And I couldn't find them in the records by doing online searches. No matter what I tried, I couldn't find this family. So then what I did is I looked for their neighbors. And once I searched for the neighbors, I looked a page forward and page back, and all of a sudden I found the weird spelling of the last name Zumstein turned into this Sumpstein, or Steen even. So that helps us in a particular record like that. When we're they're there, they're just indexed improperly. But again, as I said with the indexing or the records of relatives, your ancestors can show up as witnesses, as neighbors on land, uh, purchases. There's a lot of times your ancestors are gonna show up in records that you hadn't expected, but if you will search for their neighbors, you're gonna find them show up. And sometimes in court cases, I've seen this before, it just lists the first person in the court case, but there's quite a few people that are neighbors suing something like maybe the city or the water district or something like that. But just the lead neighbor is listed. But if you go look for their neighbor, you're gonna find your ancestor listed on that lawsuit as well. So make sure you are using all the strategies I said before and then go apply them to the kin and the neighbors and you're gonna be busy for a while. And hopefully this will help you to break down some brick walls, to find facts that you hadn't even realized existed and so forth. So be sure to check out the show notes. The link is in the description box. And if you're ready for more tips and tricks on how to climb your family tree, be sure to check the video above. And if you just wanna see what's new on Family History Fanatics, be sure to check out the video right there.